game called Tavern Tales Legends of Dungeon Drop. The premise is that we are adventurers who have been, uh, we've spent many a day going into the dungeons and slaying monsters and, and looting good stuff and whatnot. And now we are all reconvening at the local board and barrel tavern and regaling each other with tales of our glory. Uh, and the way that this works is we are all going to be dealt six random heroes at the start. Uh, we will discard down to four, but just to show you what we're working with here, let's, uh, let's zoom in on that a little bit. Uh, you're either going to have specialists or, I think, standard adventurers. Those are the two possible types of hero cards that will show up. Specialists are going to have one, a single color in the top banner. Adventurers are going to have two. And on your turn, you're going to have a choice between either staking a claim or uh, thinking and drinking. Oh, and we'll talk about staking a claim first, because that's what we're going to be starting with. On your turn, you're going to stake a claim by playing a hero from your hand. And uh, claiming, let's see, so let's say I play this gnome specialist. He is, uh, you're looking at the color that's in the corners of these mm, depths. Okay. okay. So that Super. color matches the caverns. So if I'm playing the gnome, I'm saying that uh, me and the gnome went down into the caverns and we did some stuff and, and then we're gonna pick a, a feat card. Now with a specialist, you'll pick two. With a regular adventure, you only pick one. You'll pick two feat cards from below the caverns in this case will say that I that I'm staking a claim on these two. I don't know. But uh, I I say that I I went adventuring into the caverns with the gnome and we took we took out we killed a boblin and uh, got a treasure chest for our trouble. And that's the story that I'm telling. The play then passes to the player on the left who then has the option to one up me or pass. If you opt to one up, you'll play a different uh, any hero card from your hand that has the cavern's color mm. up in the top banner. Mm. When you play it, you play it face up in front of you, and anybody else, whoever the current leader is, will then turn their card face down to indicate I'm no longer. Oh, you, you one up me, and you're basically you're saying you are mistaken, sir. It was I with the high elf who went down and slayed the boblin, etc. And so forth. Mm. Uh, so there's a little bit of room for some storytelling while we're playing this game. I hate storytelling. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm sorry. Stories Greg. are dumb. Uh, <laughs> if uh, if you pass, that does not necessarily mean that you're out for the round because the the play is going to keep going around the table until whoever the current active player is, it gets back to them. So if everybody passes and it gets back to Eric while he's the, the active player, he's going to take the trick, basically. Take these cards. So, so why would you pass? You pass maybe because you don't have a, a hero that, that can go that to, can go to that got it, got it, depth. Okay. Or maybe because you're, you're not particularly interested in whatever the feet cards are that are, ah, that because, are at okay. stake. Okay. Because once, uh, once, we, once it gets back around to whoever currently has control... They're going to claim these cards and score points based on the numbers up at the top. The Boblin, very simple. He's worth three points. You immediately score three points on your little prestige tracker right there. Uh -huh. The treasure chest. Now, most of these, uh, so these feet cards are either loot that you got from the dungeon or they're monsters that you slayed while you were down there. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Loot cards are, like, tre like the treasure chest, are going to be worth a different amount of points depending on how many treasure chests you have total. So if you're taking your first treasure chest, it's worth one point here. Okay. If, let me let me zoom in on this a little bit. So we can actually see what we're talking about. Uh, Ooh, so your first cool camera. your first treasure chest is worth one point. And then if you've already got a treasure chest in front of you when you claim one, then that one that you're claiming is worth six points instead. So you'll see the treasure chests are kind of going to go fluctuate up and down in their point uh, values. Yeah, they are. Uh, there's different stuff on the table one, here. 1, 12, 16. Yeah, so the first two relics are only worth one point, but th if there's only four of them in the oh, deck, also 
there's a number in the top right. That's how uh, many of that card are in the deck. Okay. So if you can manage to get all four mm. relics, your fourth relic is worth 16 points. That's crazy. That's massive. Dragon Egg, though, you only want one of, because anything after one is going to give you negative yeah. points. Yeah, exactly. So there's, uh, so point values are going to change as the game okay. goes on. One feet means a card? Yeah, what's that? Two or draw one feet? Yes, that means you can either take two points, or you can just keep the card, not score anything for it, draw a feet card from the deck, and score whatever point value that is. Oh. Oh, so you discard it okay. after you draw the, you keep, the next you, card. You'll still keep it, just for... I guess end game scoring so, purposes or whatever. But you could count, but, but you, it could like, you won't score any points for that gotcha. card. Right. So uh, you too, if you if you pass and then somebody else one ups, then you're gonna get another go. And on that other go, you can opt. You can still opt to one up. You're not out of the game just because you passed. Oh, okay. So, so you, you can. So it comes back if, to you. Yeah, it'll come back. Yeah, circle. it has to go all the way around and and get back to somebody with everybody having passed for the, the gotcha. trick to be over. Cool. So you're still in it, even if you pass, because somebody else could one-up and keep it going. Got it. Uh, so that's that's the basics. Now, we're all going to start with... Uh, I'm going to deal out six cards. You're going to discard two. We'll shuffle them back into the deck. So we'll have a hand of four at the start of the game. All right. Now, after a trick is done, you do not replenish your, your hand. Because if you'll remember, I gave you two options on your turn. You can either stake a claim, or you can think and drink. To, oh, yeah. To think and drink, you draw three cards from the hero deck. Kyle, what do your laser eyes see? <laughs> Not much right now. <laughs> you draw three hero cards from the deck. Then uh, you will add them to your hand, discard one card from your hand. It can be one of the new ones, it can be one of the old ones. And then if you're over your hand limit, which at the start of the game is four, you discard down down to your hand limit. Oh, okay. So, but that's that's think and drink. How do these get replenished? Those those will get replenished at after uh, the trick is taken. Okay. So if, if we took those two and they went to Eric, then two more would come out right away. And then when you took two instead of three, why did you not take three? You never take three. Specialists, you get to claim two. Okay. And regular adventures, you only get to claim one. Gotcha. Okay, cool. And does it matter yeah, which two that you claim? No. Okay. You so, can choose so can... any any three from that yeah. depth. Yeah. Okay. Or, well, any two oh, from that so depth. So you could have taken this one. Yeah, you could have taken these two. They don't have it. to be the two. So they don't have to be in order. So it doesn't yeah. matter them being stacked. Should we it, spread them out more then? Uh, I mean, we could. It, it matters with some of the advanced rules that we are not currently playing with. All right, cool. Uh, oh, and we're playing for whoever the first player to get to 30 prestige points is the winner. It's going to be me. Um, it's going to be me. Once you, get to, be once you get to 16 prestige points, you'll see on your little score tracker, there's a little minus one between 15 and yeah, 16. Yeah, what's that all about? That's your hand size limit is decreased by one. Max of max of three heroes in your hand instead of four. Wow, that, interesting. For the second half of the game. There's some low, low number limits on this game. Yeah, so there's there's going to be hand management, like how much do you really want to take that trick versus holding on to cards. So that's the gist of the game. Hey, thanks for hanging out. If you want to spend more time with us, do us a favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and most importantly, head on over to twitch.tv slash bnbtabletop and give us a follow there. We play board games live every Sunday night at 5 p.m. Pacific time on a show we call The Board and Barrel. And we like to keep things interactive. You guys can influence what happens throughout the course of a game with our buff and nerf house rules. You can also make predictions on how things are going to pan out, play virtual bingo for a chance to win a free board game of your own, and heckle us and stuff from the chat. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you Sunday night.